The psyllid from North America was found in New Zealand in 2006. The psyllid can transmit a bacterium, Liberobacter, that's believed to cause diseases that destroy the quality of crops. It affects the group of plants containing potatoes, tomatoes, tamarillos and capsicums. The psyllid is a tiny phloem sucking insect, about the size of an aphid, some say it looks like a cicada, and it feeds on solanaceous crops like the potato, outdoor tomatoes, greenhouse capsicums and tomatoes. There's quite a few host plant species that it feeds on. The psyllid population is basically throughout the whole of New Zealand. It was first found here in 2005 and 2006. By 2007 8 it was already in Canterbury. So basically throughout the whole growing regions. The adult comes into the crop and lays eggs into the crop and it's the nymphal stages which are the ones that are basically sucking the phloem from the plant. It's not only the psyllid feeding but it's the fact that it vectors a bacterial pathogen which is new to science, it's called Candidatus liberobacter and potentially there's another bacterial pathogen that's been found in potatoes in 2009 and that's a species of phytoplasma. Well, one of the obvious signs is, of course, the zebra chip disorder, what it, the Liberobacter does to the potatoes, and that involves the discoloration of the inside of the potato. And I've got an example that I've brought with me to show you today. And as you can see, these vascular rings and brown specks, that's a very common, distinctive feature of the psyllid that has transmitted Liberobacter into your crop. And when this potato is fried, these rings here will go very black and dark colour and become unmarketable. Well obviously you will not see the discoloration to start with, but other effects can be on your yield. It can, you can have smaller potatoes, you can have a reduced yield altogether. It depends when the Liberobacter comes in to your crop. But in terms of the potato, take it home, cut it up, it just won't cook as well, it'll be a lot more floury and the consumer may not like the look of the zebra chip. The psyllids on the plant, are, there's quite a distinctive look about most of your potato plants and if you look at this plant for example, you see this yellowing and it's quite often called psyllid yellows but it's really describing what the plant's looking like and you get the green veins down the middle of the leaf and all the leaves start getting this yellowed looking appearance. Another good symptom is the upward curling of your leaves. A lot of them tend to have this pinkish look about them as well, so we get upward curling of the leaves and necrosis of your leaves in severe cases. Um, you'll see white sugar on the leaves, which is the excretion of the psyllid. Then the plant tends to senesce a lot earlier. You do tend to get a lot of aerial tubers. Um, you also get multi-stemming, so whereas you'd normally have a central stem, your potato plant has got several stems. There might be up to six, eight, ten thin stems. They're weak stems. Um, your potatoes may be a lot smaller, or even marble size. And of course the typical, when you cut a potato open, you've got the zebra chip symptoms. Could you see the damage to the leaf that sort of leads you to look on the underside of the leaf to find the nymphs. Robin Oakley is a fifth generation vegetable grower. My understanding of the impact that it's had on the industry so far is there's been estimates put out that it costs the industry in the vicinity of about 50 million dollars that last growing season but I think it's early days yet because I think as we, they found last year a lot of the infection and trouble came later in the season and the biggest cost was mainly seen in the process sector with the crop not being suitable to process. The effect the psyllid's actually having right here in our business, but hard to tell at this stage. We're taking quite a cautious approach into this season. We're not sure what extent of damage we might get. At a personal level, I'm very concerned because from what we understand, if the seed crops get infected with the Liberobacter, it can transfer onto the seed that we buy and plant in our next year's crop. Therefore, we've introduced infection into the crop right from when we start planting. I think it's probably a realistic expectation that we're going to have to live with, with the psyllid and it's, it's a matter of what the science can bring out that's it's going to minimise the losses and we, we get to get on with it as, as we've done in the past with other pests and diseases. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.